just wants to kill everything in sight. <laughs> Welcome back to Tarantula Zone. Today we're going to be doing one of the first videos of a new vlog series we intend to do, which will basically recap everything that's happened in the Tarantula Zone over the past week. Because this is the first video, uh, this recap is basically going to be everything that's happened since our last recap in previous videos, essentially. If you haven't already, it would mean so much to both of us if you could hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. And if you have already, thank you. Starting off, we'll talk about some of the molts that we've had in the tarantula zone over the past couple of weeks. So we've had plenty of our slings molting. We've had three of our brachypalmas, the Kalenbergi, the Classy, and the Albo Blossom. These were very small slings. They're just starting to lose that sort of like peachy colour to them, which is super good. Our Samopis Aminia, Gramostola Pulchra, our Pisal Terrier Vitata, and our Pteranoculus marina. Also, some of our juvies have molted. Our Brachypelma Hamori, Brachypelma Albiceps both molted. Our Albiceps was missing a leg due to its previous molt before we got it, so now that one's grown back a new leg. It looks really cute and out of place. It's like a little skinny leg. And our Amythimus Sheetate also molted. We've got quite a big update on that one, but we'll save that for a bit later and get these molts out of the way first. Also, our juvenile Gramostola Polkropes molted, which we only found out today when we went to feed. A few days ago, we noticed some of the dubias that we'd been feeding her had actually burrowed underground, and we thought she'd actually eaten them. And it turns out she was in pre-molt, and it was very quick. Mm. Yeah, so we, we went to feed her, uh, took the enclosure off, and, and my daughter said, Oh, there's two tarantulas in here. We <laughs> both looked at each other and was like, what? And then, yeah, we had a little look and there was a, a molt in there. But it must have molted today, basically. Because yeah. I'm pretty sure it was fine yesterday. Mm -hmm. Which is cool, we've had a lot of molts recently, which is nice. We've had the Harpastera pulchropes for a couple of weeks now, um, and it is webbed up a lot. It looks really, really cool. I sort of want to upgrade it into something a bit bigger to kind of give it a bit more uh, free roam to web up because it really has utilised the space really well. But what I've said in a, in a previous video, I'll reiterate again, these are an awesome spider because they are absolutely stunning, but they are constantly out, aren't they? It doesn't, it doesn't matter what time of day, it's just sat there showing off its sweet colours. Mm -hmm. So definitely recommend getting one of those even if the price is a little steep but they're definitely worth it in my opinion. We also rehoused the Peaceful Terrier Tigrana Waseli. It was in a very small enclosure initially just kind of until we had something uh, a bit more substantial to put it in. Um, it's done a lot of digging to my dismay as it put all of the mud not mud, but the cocoa fibre right against the door. This morning when I fed it, it was a bit tricky because I was trying to push the cocoa fibre in and then the red runners were jumping in and then flicking the cocoa fibre out. It was a massive pain in the ass, but I've moved it over now a bit, so that's all sorted. And it, and it fed, so it must be happy, right? The sea darlingy that we picked up from the Western Invert Show has been busy making burrows. It's burrowed all the way down and all along the side of the enclosure. Um, I think it's going to be doing some more. It's such a busy little tarantula. It's also webbed around the top of the enclosure, going into the entrance, so fill any of the prey items that we put down for it. It's really impressive. The sea marsh shelly hasn't really done too much to its enclosure. It is burrowed down a little bit, but it's such a big spider and a very confident spider that it's just out a lot wandering. You don't want to mess with a sea marsh shelly, so. No. Yeah, it's, it's made a small burrow. Uh, pretty much just enough for its body size, but it's constantly just roaming around. It just wants to kill everything in sight, so. Mm. I don't think it'll do too much more burrowing. No. We also received a mystery box a couple of weeks ago from Creatures from the North. We really couldn't recommend enough. They are an amazing tarantula seller. Um, they don't have a website at the moment. Well, they have a price list on their site that you can download, I think. Is that how it works? Yeah. yeah. But you have to message them over Facebook 
which, which may look a bit dodgy. Uh, they couldn't be nicer and the prices are really, really good. And I think we got over 200 quid's worth in our mystery box. But yeah, but we, we didn't bother doing an unboxing, but you you probably would have noticed. If, if you've basically, if you've seen a few spiders that you've not seen in other videos, then they're the ones that we got from <laughs> the mystery box, basically. So the biggest update in the tarantula zone, and not a very pleasant one, is that our Omithomachite actually suffered from impaction. She had been refusing food for a while, and we put this down to pre-molt, which is, you know, she was showing all the signs of pre-molt, there was nothing to worry about, and she did molt. She molted very early hours of the morning, and then we noticed that she was walking about pretty much instantly, and was leaking poop everywhere, rubbing it all over the side of the enclosure. It was, there was just so much coming out, like, it was very disturbing to see. So because that she had just molted, we didn't want to intervene or, you know, try to bother her too much because she was super fragile. We left her for a few days. Luckily, she didn't die during that, which we was actually expecting to happen just because she was yeah. in such a fragile state. About two days after the initial molt, I had a look and she was still pooping, but not as much. Yeah, there was a lot of like dry poop around her. One of her spinnerets looks damaged, which is not good. She was walking funny. But on the first day of her molt, you could see that her abdomen was very like abnormal looking. There was bulges in some parts and it was flatter on others. Just, you know, the sort of signs that you would expect from a tarantula with impaction. We really struggled online finding someone who had had a tarantula that was suffering from impaction, managed to molt, and then was leaking it by itself without any intervention. If any of you know anything about impaction, you know that in pretty much all cases the tarantula dies. Um, not really sure why. I believe that's because the internal damage has already been done at the point that you notice there's a problem and added with the stress of having to relieve the plug that is causing the impaction and yeah that's just extremely stressful for a tarantula anyway so we were kind of fortunate that she managed to molt and was able to relieve herself but we still don't know the extent of the damage that's going to cause on her long term and up to her next molt so far she's walking about she's acting hungry we're still gonna wait a few days until we try to feed her as it has been about a week since this initially happened she's drinking which is really good her abdomen is a bit floppy we think that's because of the damage that she's caused when she was rubbing it everywhere to try and you know, get rid of this but in herself she's actually quite normal she's now got her adult coloration which is incredible to look at although she's not adult yet <laughs> yeah i think a, c a couple more molts and it will the the, the colors will be a lot more vibrant but she's not just this kind of brown color <laughs> little brown fuzzy thing yeah. she's my favorite tarantula overall and she was the first tarantula old world species that I picked. That was the one that I wanted, like my big tarantula. She holds a special place in my heart. I'm really hoping that she pulls through this. It's gonna be quite nervous leading up to her next molt. And whether or not this is gonna happen again, I hope not, but fingers crossed. If anyone has experienced this, please give us some information or just let us know your stories down below because it would be much appreciated to us. This is completely new. This is something that we've never had to deal with before and it's it's not nice at all. No, but it's, it's also from, from the information that we gathered that over 99% of these cases, the tarantula dies almost within a couple of days, right? So this like this is really uncharted territory for perhaps tarantula keepers as a whole, as not many people have had had this sort of experience. So yeah, if, if, if you have somehow been unfortunate 
and had a similar ordeal, yeah, please, please let us know. We will do a little update on our shoot today. We'll most likely just upload it to Instagram. It'll just be a short clip. So if you want to see how she's doing, head over to our Instagram and take a look. We'll probably do that in a few days once we've got her to feed and just see how she is. That's it for now for this vlog. Hopefully some of you have enjoyed it. Uh, we do aim to produce one of these once a week. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching and see you again next time. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>